You know, you know, I was, I was wondering. Um, I read a lot about how certain places have like really high crime. Like I hear West Virginia has a lot of high crime, and like these, a lot of these places outside of cities have high crime. They say New York has low crime, and I'm like, why is it then that people in West Virginia, there's like not many police around, and then why, like you know, and people just get along just fine or get by just fine, and then why is it in New York? There's like we're hearing these massive spike in murders and things like this. Wasn't some guy just beaten and stripped naked in the street? Mm-hmm. In New York? Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. watching Probably. that video. Yeah. There's a video of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez, I mean, yeah. I, I've seen stuff like that in real life in New York City growing up. I've seen crazy things that would spark people's PTSD if I described what I saw growing up. This, and, is, uh, this is from yeah. uh, six, six, uh, sorry, Luke, this yeah, from six, yeah. I want to pull yeah. this up. Six hours ago, man seen stripped and beaten in New York City. Attack was known gang member with lengthy criminal history. Oh. Victim is expected to survive. So why, the 26-year-old victim was in the area of Canal and Allen around 11.30 a.m. on Friday when the group of about a dozen men and women jumped him and took his cell phone, pants, undergarments, and shoes. They then used a sharp object to slice him in the head, hands, and torso. The victim was taken to a local hospital where he's expected to survive. On Monday, the police commissioner, Dermot Shea, released a 50-second video of what he called a brazen broad daylight attack. The footage shows the man running away from the group as they catch up and begin beating him. Police sources told the New York Post the victim lives in Brooklyn and had just returned from Atlanta. The violent crew had reportedly been staking out the nearby bus stop for the man's arrival. Police said they fled in several vehicles after the attack. A law enforcement source confirmed to Fox News the victim had been linked to the violent Mac Baller Brims gang. Hmm. If the shoe was on the other foot, he'd be part of that gang, the source said. So is it just gang violence, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. This is an interesting thing, like Chicago is an interesting gun conversation. Chicago's got a bunch of people with illegal guns and they go around shooting each other all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the left uses as an argument for gun control. Criminals who take the guns and then are causing problems and murdering people over the place. I guess for me, I've always kind of wondered if the guns are already illegal and they're committing murders with them, why would passing a law stop them from committing a murder, which is yeah. already illegal? I mean, like that's the worst crime. Yeah. Well, like, we, killing we, somebody. We see a lot of liberals. Well, one of the worst crimes. We see a lot of liberals talk about gun homicides and, and they keep forgetting that most of them are from illegal guns in jurisdictions that already banned them. Other uh, gun deaths are because of suicide. And then I think the third uh, highest level of gun death rates are from police officers shooting people. So, so if you're for, you know, gun, control you're you're not really for gun control you're for having individuals with guns take away other people's guns at the threat of using guns that's essentially what you're for and you should just be honest about it that you want people robbed of their ability to defend themselves while of course the politicians want literal machine guns protecting them all the time i like the the idea of having an armed society is kind of cool because if if some a group does rise up to overthrow the government with guns which like in holland they're probably afraid of you have the rest of the population also armed to protect the country from Civil the overthrow. War. Civil war? Well, ideally, I mean, that's possible. That did happen in the 1800s. But ideally, yeah. it would it would be a swift justice. They always say that with war. It wouldn't, man. I mean, we've, we've got 75 million Trump voters, 80 million Biden voters. But it's better than, I think, a totalitarian dictatorship. Yeah. The threat of civil well, war is better than a totalitarian dictatorship. The threat of civil war. It, it's better to know that there's a possibility. Like, the, the idea that a civil war could happen means that the dictatorship is less likely to happen. You always want to reduce harm. And, and what usually reduces harm is individuals being able to defend themselves because people then don't take uh, offensive, aggressive actions against them. They say uh, an armed society is a polite society. And I think we're seeing that in places like Florida and places like Texas, where people have the ability to protect themselves, unlike other jurisdictions like Chicago, New York City, uh, and, and a lot of the other big cities where you can't and gang violence and uh, has been skyrocketing well, because all the gang members know people are defenseless. People d- can't defend themselves if they do have a firearm. But now in many places, I think in Chicago, you can have a gun. But I, th- I think it's really difficult. For I-, I grew up there in the longest time, like all weapons were just outright banned. I think the only legal weapon you're allowed to have is is a, a rubber switch. You know, you know what that is? Mm-mm. It's like a, a long piece of rubber with a little ball at the end and you whack what? people with it. What yeah. about a knife? Yeah. No, knives, that's illegal. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
in Times Square, the biggest arrests that were made were individuals that came in from out of New York who had pocket knives. The biggest arrest that happened, uh, I, I, I forgot the exact statistic here, but, but I, I, I heard a very wild one that the, that the majority of arrests in New York happened because of tourists having guns on their, you know. Oh, hip. right. Yeah. I yep. imagine it's like a knife of a certain length. Yeah, it's like longer than three and a half inches or okay. something. So that's like a pocket knife. You can get a certain pocket knife. Or maybe you've got like a utility knife or something you carry yeah, around for like nail clippers. Yeah, yeah, and and then they're like, well, that's a crime. Can't have that. Um, Alex, do you know how many three D printed guns are in existence? Is that even measurable? Um, not really. I mean, I, I broke twenty five thousand across socials, so I would imagine there's at least twenty five thousand. Um, I I would severely, I, I would surely hope that there are many, many, many times that number, and I I believe that there are, but I I would have. No one, there, there's no way to count. Cause so, most people are making them in the privacy of their own home. And if they're doing it right, they're not telling anybody. So, we, we, we were talking about this a while, uh, like last week, I think, about ghost guns. And some people were saying they were legal. And then a bunch of people were like, no, 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 they're totally legal. So, ghost guns are legal. Is that correct? Yeah. So, if you, uh, a minute ago, we were talking about like how you can manufacture any gun you manufacture at home for your own personal use is what politicians are calling a ghost gun. Like they are, they are, they are one the same. So it's not just three D printed stuff. It's not just like the 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 eighty percent kits that you buy. It's it's anything that you're making at home. So what's how does the eighty percent kit work? So uh, basically, a com- uh, a company went said uh, went to the ATF and said, "Hey, is this uh, so okay? I need to back up." Hmm. The ATF regulates one sp- one specific part of a firearm that is the f- as a firearm. It's the serialized part. It's the one part that you actually have to go to uh, an FFL, a gun store, to buy. And what so, part is that? Uh, it, it varies based on the, the firearm. Oh, okay. On a Glock, it's the polymer frame. Uh, on an AR-15, it's the lower receiver where the trigger and, and the magazine go into. Um, so that's the serialized part. Now, what these 80% companies did is they went to the ATF and they had a partially finished one. that They sent them the, the lore and said, hey, is this a firearm yet? And the ATF said no. So the, the industry called it an 80% complete firearm. Yeah. So it's not quite a firearm. And the, you, can, you can buy it. It ships straight to your door. And you finish it on basic tools. Uh, there's a couple of kits out there. One you do with like a, a, a DeWalt router or something, some kind of just common hardware tool, or you can do it with a drill press. But then you still need to buy that last piece. Right. Wasn't there something going on where people were saying the ATF was raiding people for having these kits? Yeah, so there was one specific kit done by Polymer 80 called the Buy, Build, Shoot kit. And they marketed it as everything you need in a box to build a gun in a couple hours. And you would click it once, and you add to the cart, and they would ship it to your door, and then you'd spend an hour putting it together. And the ATF said that this box of parts that weren't fi- that wasn't a firearm was close enough to the definition of a firearm and marketed in such a way that it could be construed as a firearm, that it was actually a firearm, so, which doesn't make any sense right. from the legal perspective. But this is the ATF we're talking about. They, you know, fairy dust and magic. So in terms of 3D printed guns, you're printing what, like the frame, the grip, the stock or what? Yeah, basically any external part that has complex geometry. So some things that are going to be difficult to make by hand. Um, and then looking specifically at like the FGC-9, uh, the barrel and the bolt are made at home um, out of common common material. Um, and again, the barrel, uh, we're, we're finishing it uh, with basically 3D printable inserts and we're using electrochemical machining to get the internal dimensions of the barrel to the right size and rifle it and cut the chamber. And it sounds really complicated. It does. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that shot really high for yeah. a lot of people, but uh, there's a good write-up on... on. Whoa. It was uh, auto-playing a video <laughs> from, about the FGC-9. Yeah, right. Continue, continue. Yeah. Anyway, a lot of that went over a lot of people's heads. There's a really good write-up. It's It sounds really complicated. Yeah. It's not. You're... You, it's salt water and an aquarium pump in a five-gallon bucket in your garage. So in total, how much do you have to spend on supplies, materials, and uh, everything you need to, to make a FGC-9? Okay, so the the hardware to get started, the printer itself, 200 bucks. Yeah. Filament, 40 bucks. The parts to build the actual gun, your internals, about another 200 bucks. And then your, your, um, your benchtop power supply... And your aquarium pump, 
to do the electrochemical machining is like another hundred on top of that. So when you say so, electrochemical machining, um, right. you have salt water in a tank. How does that work exactly? So you, you're pumping water out of a bucket, salt water out of a bucket through the inside of the barrel. And you've got uh, an electrode in the barrel that's stripping material at the atomic oh, level awesome. off of the inside that's of the barrel cool. to bore it to the right size for your bullet and then cut rifling and then cut in your chamber. Wow. Sorry. That sounds really hard to do. Yes. Yes. It's not. Awesome. It's not hard. It's, it's, someone no. gave us a super chat a couple of days ago. They're like, no, it's so easy. You could just print an, uh, an FGC9. And I looked in, I was like, this looks hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this looks really I, hard. It, you, look, it yeah. looks hard. Yeah. It's super easy. Um, what look, what caliber is FGC9? It's a 9 mil. Nine. Oh, is that yeah, where the 9 comes from? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then the FCG, uh, FGC means something else. Yeah, that, F, uh, F gun control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that gun. Are there yeah. other printers than the Ender, like uh, next level above the Ender 5? Um, there are. Uh, you start to lose the value per dollar that you're spending. So you can get into like a three or $4,000 printer pretty quickly. What would be the value of that? Uh, I mean, you're doing the same thing you're doing on the Ender, th Ender 5. Does it print? Oh. About, about the same quality. You might get an upgrade in materials. You might be able to print with some fancy nylons or stuff like that, some higher temperature stuff. But, I mean, for yeah. the price difference. What about metal? Do you print metal? No. So metal is a whole other uh, um, uh, <laughs> manufacturing process, and it's a lot more to get into. So um, there, there's a couple different methods of doing the most popular, the cheapest one, and I'll start at this is $50,000 that you're spending to get in here. Wow. It's a laser that melts a layer of powder and then uh, the printer scoops another layer on top of it. It does another layer of melting. Is it really fast though, right? No. That goes really it, slow. It, yeah, it's pretty slow. Oh, wow. Jeez. Um, and then once all that's done, you have to take that part. You have to send it to another company to do the final, like actually make it a solid part because it's a bunch of particles that are stuck together. Right. It's got to go in like a kiln or something. Right. Like where it heats and solidifies or something like that. Yeah. And then you have to add material, physically add additional oh, material to it. So it becomes a lot more expensive, a lot more costly. There, there's applications for it, but not for like the home gunsmith. I'm going to do this in my garage for the cheap. Yeah. Um, like there are there are filaments that have metal embedded in them, but they have the same problem where it's just a bunch of metal metal particles that are just stuck together, and then you have to send it to another company yeah. to finish it. So, I got I, I got to be honest, man. You, you, you say it sounds easy, but I'm like looking at these websites, and it's just there's hurdles to you know the average person can't just do this. Yeah, no, every, everything is a learning curve, but uh, we've tried to make it really really simple. So. In order to get started, I'm going to plug my site. Go to, go to theguide.controlpew.com. Uh, that'll get you your first 10 steps into 3D printing. You're not 3D printing guns yet. You're just 3D printing. You're just learning how to use the printer, how to use the software, how to get it dialed in so it actually functions and things fit together properly. And then the next step, right? Find a gun you want to print. Print it. And, and Control it Pew is C T R L P E W. Yeah. C T R L P E W. That's the guy and, dot control pew dot com. And just to clarify, uh, having and making your own FGC nine is legal federally. Is that correct? Yeah. Federally, it's legal. Uh, state laws may vary. I know Maryland yeah. has some funny business going on. I yes. know California has funny business going on. I know New York has funny business going yeah. on. Well, California and Maryland banned flamethrowers they're they're the two states yes. I, and i know this because i own a flamethrower <laughs> they banned flamethrowers which is just uh, utterly ridiculous well, and so un-american i'm sorry i thought this was america <laughs> people, people are getting in trouble with the the elon musk flamethrowers yeah because yeah. people are buying them and it's called not a flamethrower by the boring company uh -huh. and then people are getting the, the feds showing up at the door being like that's a flamethrower yeah. well, the funny business is that's actually a weed burner it's not a flamethrower. It really? just has a little bit of flame that sits in the end. It doesn't throw the flame right. anywhere, and it's really depressing, and I'm really sad about it. <laughs> and then, now, now, importantly, making your own 3D-printed firearm, like the FGC-9, is there any legislation against doing this uh, locally, statewide? Is there anything against 3D printing on the books now? Because I've seen individuals like Chuck Schumer who uh, literally... Uh, explain explain the black uh, what was it uh, the silk road in in such a way where it promoted it on national television a few years ago now talking about the ease of 3d printing firearms there's a lot of misunderstanding but but is there any legislation proposed or or on the books now against 3d printing federally state or local not at the federal level at the state level like i said california maryland new york i think there is some legislation that exists 
Although, how far you get with that, I don't know. There's a couple people. Um, Reno is a, a guy from Cal a YouTuber from California. He's working on a 3D printed California compliant uh, Glock and AR-15. So there are some specifics to work within those sets of laws, but I I'm not as well read on the individual states to be yeah. able to answer that with any level of competence. Well, you know, even traveling with firearms, you, you, you learn about so many of the oh, yeah. jurisdictions, reciprocities, and you literally need to hire a lawyer to explain yeah. it to you because of the different made up laws that each politician interprets in their own unique ways, which is uh, again, not universal and very confusing and leads a lot of people in trouble. Yeah. I'm, don't know I'm the so, law. I'm so disappointed because I, I try, for like I sat for like three or four hours I dug through the law to come out here with my trunk of fun yeah and just show you guys what we're working with and I couldn't do it because I just couldn't figure out how to navigate the whole thing properly and I was like okay I can't yeah I can't even begin thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast we do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. so come back to check us out when we go live don't forget to subscribe hit the like button Hit the notification bell, and we are also available on all podcast platforms for free if you want to listen to us there. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you all next time.